Z here. Today we're going to make some cards and tags using some stamps from Hobby Art. Now they're a company out of the UK and I got them from topflightstamps.com. They find the coolest stamps from all over the world and bring them back to us here in the United States. The neat thing about Hobby Art stamps is that they are gorgeous for coloring. So if you like to do Copic coloring, definitely give those stamps a look because I think you'll find a lot of stamps that have nice big open areas for coloring. I use their pig stamps, uh, Christmas stamps, a couple videos ago. Um, and they're just so fun. They're, they just are a dream if you like to color. Now, since I know I'm going to be using my alcohol markers on this, I am stamping with Memento ink. That's my favorite ink to use when I'm using my alcohol pens because I don't need to heat set it and it doesn't smear. So uh, if you're using other inks, you might want to just give it a heat set real quick to make sure that your ink isn't going to go anywhere. Now for this card, I thought I would do a little scene building. So I'm stamping this palm frond or kind of around the top and edge just to give it a little atmosphere. And then I'm gonna stamp this really cute camel head. Now there are, um, there's three different big camel heads in this set and they're just so fun. They're really great for tags because they're tall and skinny, but I thought it'd be cute in this little scene. And then I am also stamping this on a post-it note so I can make a little mask because I wanna stamp some stuff behind it. Now I've gotta be completely honest. I actually went and did this again off camera because I did a little flub up that, uh, that I'm not sure if you'll see it or not in this, but uh, <laughs> but you know, we all make mistakes right um, and then after you stamp on a post-it note you simply trim it out and then you can stick it on top of the image you want to protect now here's a tip anytime you take the time to make a mask store it in your stamp set because then you'll have it the next time you want to use these stamps so what I do is I keep my stamps in the original packaging and I will take any masks that I make and I will stick them to the uh, the inside back of the packaging so I still have it whenever I want to use that again and because I like to do a lot of scene building especially with like um, animal stamps like my Quetzalcraft stamps and other characters like that I use them over and over again so it just saves so much time and effort down the road and you can see I stamped those sand dunes behind and now I'm stamping a couple uh, palm um, trunks tree trunks and in the in the one I ended up redoing, I actually only put one in there because I got it a little crowded, I thought. But um, I also decided I would mask off the palm fronds so I could stamp the smaller palm fronds and have it look like it was in back. So that's what you're doing when you're masking. You're basically stamping the things closer to you first and then covering them up so you can stamp the things further away. Now, sometimes when you do this, uh, especially if you have a solid stamp like the palm fronds here, you'll get a little halo around the areas where you stamped, but you can fix that. Just try Try to find a marker that's pretty close in color and you can just kind of fill in some of those areas so it looks like it uh, goes uh, like really close so keep that trick tucked away now I knew I wanted to do some matching tags so I decided to stamp the um, the heads and some hats and I would just color and cut those out with my skin and cut later so here I thought oh I'm gonna put the hat right on the scene and this is the mess up that I, uh, I told you about it looked weird. It looked like it was like falling off his head and I was so bummed because I liked the image so much up to this point, but I had all the masks cut out. I had all my stamps right there. So I'm like, I'm just going to stamp another one and it was easy as pie. So don't fret over your mistakes. You know, life is made in the mistakes. Cards are made in the mistakes. If you don't succeed on your first try, you learn something. So just roll with it and, uh, and enjoy the process because Hey, nothing, nothing's perfect all the time, right? You're going to make mistakes. So I'm just using um, some of my alcohol markers to color in these camels. I'm using a combination of Blick Studio markers, which I really like. Somebody had uh, recently asked me about those, so I thought I would pull them out and use them a little bit today. And I also have some Stampin' Blends markers. Honestly, folks, all of your alcohol markers are going to work well together. So don't feel like you have to have every single brand and every single color of every single brand because you will put yourself in the poorhouse trying to keep up with all the alcohol markers that are out there. Just, um, just find what you think is going to work best for you. And then you can add markers from other collections if needed to it. Uh, I do recommend having a good set of grays because you could color something pretty much in grayscale and then go over it with a pale colored color. So uh, it can really give you a lot of bang for your buck. I do like the Blick Studio. I have the uh, 96 set 
and um, that had a really great selection of warm grays, cool grays, and then basic grays, which um, I really used. I probably use the cool grays the most. I'd probably recommend getting cool grays first, but uh, but that all came in that set, and it really makes the set versatile because then I can just glaze over with another color if I need to. Of course, I was doing this donkey in gray, so it didn't really matter, but um, you know, just for a future reference. And you know, everything blends really well together with those markers and also with other markers. I do like a brush tip for blending, but it's certainly not essential, and I use chisel tips and bullet tips all the time too. Now here's a trick, and this trick came about because I could not find my die set after die cutting the first thing because my studio becomes a complete disaster area when I start making a card. I don't know why. So I'm like, well, I want to mat that. I can't find my die, so I just stuck that down onto a piece of red paper and cut around it. So nothing fancy. And I think it looks really good. And actually, the next size up die would have been way too big for the type of mat that I wanted. So I went with it. The paper I'm using is from a couple years ago from Cosmo Cricut. I had bought one of their digital downloads, and I lost the file, so I've been like severely rationing this paper because I can't print out any more of it, but um, I thought it was really pretty and I would love these kind of like um, really bright, fun, retro colors that, uh, that that line of Christmas paper had. And there's some more of it. I just thought that was so pretty. I wish I could remember where I stored the files for that, probably on an old computer. And I'm taking some of the scraps that I'd left over because I'm like totally hoarding this paper that, that I printed out. I've like keeping every little scrap and I'm putting it together to make this one here with this donkey card. I just think that's really cute. And this is another tip. If you don't have a like a larger die to mat, like that was the biggest one in the set that I stamped the donkey on. So I cut the, the same shape out again on red cardstock and look I'm cutting it corner to corner and then I can adhere it to the back of my panel and it's going to look like I have a custom layer there's going it's going to kind of tuck in in the little corners where I cut it but it's not that noticeable and it's a great way to stretch your supplies if you've got a die and you want a matting layer but you don't have the next size die up or it doesn't didn't come with a matting layer cut it again out of your contrasting paper and you can see on the back how I cut it and spaced it apart you can get a really great mat that way of course it's not absolutely 100% perfect like if you had a die that was exactly a sixteenth of an inch larger but darn it it's pretty close and I think it looks great and nobody else is gonna have a card just like that well you might because you watch my video so you can copy me but and I don't mind at all um, but I think it's a great way to just to get a little more bang for your buck and um, so this time I restamped my camel and gave it one palm tree and I'm like I'm gonna glue on one of the hats because then I can situate it and it made more sense for the hat to be on top of his head rather than behind it um, rookie mistake there, man. Uh, and I'm blast from the past. I grabbed my decorative edge scallop scissors and just made a couple little borders because I didn't really have enough room to mat that panel fully. And I didn't want to trim it down because I really liked how it was coming out. So I just cut a couple strips with the scallop scissors and adhered it to the edge. And then I'm using the sentiment from that stamp set. Um, oh, oh, camel ye faithful, which I thought was really cute because I love my puns and I stuck that right on the card. And there you can see the finished cards. I thought they came out really, really nice. And those will be kind of special people cards because you don't have time to do all that coloring when the Christmas season's upon you. You gotta kind of do that ahead of time. And that's why I'm showing you these Christmas cards early, even though I they probably heard a collective groan when this video went live. I think I heard the world groaning Christmas already, but, uh, but you gotta be prepared if you wanna do coloring on your cards, I think. So I just cut out the little camel heads using my scan and cut machine as well as the hats and I'm just putting them on some tags. I cut tags out of that same pattern paper from Cosmo Cricut and just kind of pieced together the little tag toppers and my little cutout shapes here. The dies I used for that are from my favorite things and it's a really versatile set. Um, I've used them quite a bit and it's just a really nice tag shape. You could of course use shipping tags if you already have some, that would work just fine or whatever tag cutter you have or you can cut a rectangle and cut up the corners. You know, you do you, make your tags however you wanna make your tags. You don't need to have every special fancy thing that is available. And I'm just using some very simple narrow uh, ribbon. This is just a, like a moss green satin ribbon that I've had in my stash. This is a nice basic to have these like ribbons. They go on sale all the time at the big box stores for like, you know, 25 cents a spool. So I grab them when I'm getting low and they come in really handy. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and check out our sponsor, topflightstamps.com. There's a coupon code in the video description for you. And I thank you so much for watching. Till next time, happy crafting.